Hi everyone, we hope that you're safe and healthy and you're wearing your mask and getting vaccinated. Right now, you're listening to Let's Talk Pride podcast, which is hosted by Media Cell. Let's Pride Talk. I'm Ananya, and this is my friend and co-host, Karvika. First of all, happy Pride. As you might know that June is Pride Month, uh, because let's be honest, every other mega corporation has been reminding that it's Pride Month and that we should buy from them. But anyhow, while the internet has seen most of the Pride celebration this month, I think we can all agree that you know, maybe things on ground are far less optimistic, you know. Like, even in our own college, uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they lack base, they lack a basic awareness, you know, about stuff like why pronouns are important, you know, or what allyship is. And and, and the, the community itself is more than the LGBT itself. So, uh, we thought that this podcast would be a good idea. That way, like, we could all sit down and uh, we could talk about uh, these issues and also thank you so much for agreeing to do this uh, you're really amazing and kind people and you took out your time and we can't be more thankful for it so uh, i think i should start off by introducing all of you first of all we have vanch and uh, vanch is someone i've known for some time the pronouns are they and he uh, he loves pals he loves i guess poetry because we bonded over that so and he also has very good recommendations. Next, uh, of one of our panelists that we have is Tofu. And uh, they, are, uh, they are one of very close friends that I've made in the past year. Uh, they are bisexual. And uh, they're one of the person that I was very excited about to have in this talk. Then we have Rajit. And uh, he's, they are pansexual. And their pronouns are they and he. And they love Taylor Swift. I think that's the most important information that I can give in this podcast. <laughs> and then we have Pritika. Uh, Pritika and I, we haven't talked that much. I hope that we do because they seem like a very amazing and nice person. And they pronounce a she and they. Um, so, uh, because I have been, like, I've talked to a lot of community people in the last year. And the last year has been all of, like, lockdown stuff. So we couldn't go out and everything. So I really wanted to ask that how has Pride been in this year for you? So for me, I was not really out before the, before the lockdown thing. So this is kind of, like, the first time I'm celebrating Pride after coming out. So it's obviously amazing because it's nice to have people around you you can relate to and you can talk to without being fed like you know people would not get it or people would not understand how uh, weird or amazing both it can get so uh, yeah right, right. as being queer so i i love this i love the pride i've loved the pride pride month because i've met so many amazing people last year and this was like one of the most amazing year if we're talking about like meeting people, this was like one of the most amazing we have ever had. So that was cool. It's been better for the people who are not usually open to interacting with people, like you know, not like in public, like they are scared to come out to people, scared to you know talk to people because they're afraid of the judgment passing through, afraid of how they perceive them. Right, you know, right. right now, since everything is online and everything is like mostly restricted to your homes i think it's easier for them to interact easier for them to make friends not like completely easier i mean like judgment still comes through because online comes with a lot of back talk as well it's bullying it's homophobia it's a lot of triggers for people too but i think in between all the chaos you find like a good support group like i found you i found tofu i found Vansh, and a lot of online friends I met and they were really nice. So before this year, um, Pride was very personal to me. Uh, that is, I had this uh, ritual that I used to do every year. That is, I used to go to this very uh, specific bakery on the first day of Pride, that is June the 1st. And I have done it for the last uh, five or six years and I ordered the same thing there. But this is the first time that I felt that there are a lot of people with me. And I'm not alone, and I'm not doing this alone. So, uh, I think you all talked about, uh, you know, finding your own community online. 
uh, that you can you know fall back on and that are this this source of strength for you all so uh, how do you think things are different on ground you know because uh, th- there are a lot of online communities you know where there is this uh, where people celebrate uh, uh, different sexual identities and sexualities but but on ground things remain so different you know like there is still so much homophobia and ignorance that gives way to so much discrimination and prejudice so what's your take on that like have you ever experienced it uh, what do you think as human beings uh, we should do how do you think we can educate more people so that you know this this kind of homophobia and discrimination uh, paves its way out of our society uh, so i am a fisher uh, in an engineering college and i've never been to my college so i have never faced the situation on ground but um, i have interacted with a lot of people um, both from my class and um, other branches also so what i see is that most people aren't homophobic okay they are not outright actively homophobic a lot of adults that we meet are outrightly homophobic that is they are against the existence of queer people itself but uh, a lot of people on ground are not homophobic they are just uninformed okay. and uh, i feel that in that way when they make jokes uh, they think that they are harmless and they think that they are not doing uh, harm to anybody by making those jokes and they're just for fun purposes and they think it's okay because they are doing it in a constricted group of friends and they're not doing it in public so uh, i've seen that a lot um, especially more with uh, uh, men than in women that they think that it is their right to make fun of us and that is majorly because of the way that uh, they've been raised they've seen it when the society around them with their parents with their friends so what is important is that they start a journey of unlearning uh, that is whatever has been fed to them they realize that yes uh, there is some wrong to it and we need to unlearn and we need to learn how to respect people for being themselves if if somebody does not want to do that then yes um, there's nothing that we can do to help them if somebody is not ready to change but i think that it is our duty as members of the community to uh, make people unlearn and to accept also i wanted to uh, ask about it to you know tofu and rajesh both of you because i know tofu uh, school that they that they go uh, to is not very inclusive just to put it you know at the best that i can uh, how has it been for you tofu personally because online you have found this amazing group of people who are there for you to thick and thin and then you have to go to a school that's completely opposite to it yes i mean that's a really weird thing to experience because like i'll uh, i'll go on the internet i'll see someone uh, i'll see like as a, a sim- thing as simple as a man doing makeup and then i'll not expect any backlash because of the pe- type of people i've surrounded myself with on the internet uh it's almost everyone's either an ally or from the community itself so it's not i would not expect people to be homophobic around me but then i'd put my phone down and i'd see my mother call my brother a slur just for wearing a pink shirt so i think that's a very experience weird experience we can see like there's a very big contrast from what i experience online and what i experience in real life and that's also plus because i can be myself on the internet at least if i can't tell people my real pronouns in real life if i can't tell them not to dead name me at least i have this space where i can be myself and not apologize for it or like not feel shamed for it and i think that's that's amazing thank you so much for putting that to who uh, also rachit and pritik i wanted your opinion on this a lot of people like in my college uh, it is very recently that i put my pronouns publicly on my social media profiles and all of that so i don't expect a lot of people to uh, even who even those who know me to uh, call me by my right pronoun but uh, i'm also even when they do call call me by some pronoun that i uh, actually do not like i do not call them out on it because Uh, i don't know i feel like they don't understand uh, what it means and uh, i am not always in the right space to explain everything to them and uh, recently we've seen that you know 
uh, a lot of people in my college actually think that uh, if you put your pronouns uh, somewhere in your on i don't know instagram or something you're queer i don't know why but they just assume that uh, if you're putting your pronouns publicly they equate it to you being queer which is weird uh, right yeah. rajit what's your take on this yeah so basically at first i so normally when they see my pronouns they go for this slashing in my instagram bio and they would use like sir or man or all the masculine terms because they see the slash he which is after they so i usually like tell them that to not use you know masculine or hyper masculine terms because i don't really relate to them and i told, tell them to go for the neutral so I, i think they understand but then again it's like the gravity where uh like some terms do not have the neutral terms now recently i'm getting to know even i'm going to know more the neutral terms like yesterday i learned like sir and ma'am the neutral is like tis and that's that's what's new to me as well so um this is very recent i think it's been about one or two months and those of my friends who know um, they make an effort to not miss send me uh, because words like sir um, bro they make me very uncomfortable uh, like if someone is using them in a conversation with me, with me i would feel, i feel um, usually i feel very uncomfortable but till now i have not had the courage to correct anyone um, from my class because i know that if i tell someone to not use bro or sir for me even though i have my pronouns in their in my bio uh they would ask questions why you know matlab they would assume uh, first of all they would ask me questions if i'm queer or not and i don't want to be subjected to those questions from people i barely know so yes my friends don't uh please send me they make an effort also i see them making an effort but i have not yet had the courage to outright tell someone not use a word for me or to use correct pronouns because i don't know what the consequences will be I mean I have heard that being homophobic is a uh, freedom of speech and I am the one I am the villain here by telling them not to be homophobic. Yes exactly. You should realize that, that freedom of speech has some limitations. You can't be outright homophobic, racist, casteist, misogynistic and then say that uh, it is my mistake that I am getting offended. It is not. If someone is from a minority group and you are using a slur or a word which has a history then you're wanting to offend them you're wanting to you know trigger them and you're wanting to uh, make them feel bad about themselves and that's not a good thing to do and they just casually pass it off saying hey, it is just a joke you know you cannot you are so sensitive you cannot take it uh, why is it that only you are so sen- sensitive other people are not this is very weird because most of those people are homophobic uh, how would you expect them to stop you or call you out on it mm-hmm. right and uh, there's one more question that i wanted to ask about coming out especially in institutions like these which i know is very 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 tough <laughs> so i am probably guessing that a lot of you are not uh, completely out to the people you know in your colleges but if uh, because you know when we circulated this form google form we had three people who sort of came out to us because the form was anonymous and it gave me hope that there are queer people everywhere if even if you don't want to see them if if you don't want to hear their stories so um, first of all i would like to say that um, for myself uh, coming out is a privilege that is i have a choice on who i want to come out to and who i don't want to come out to but for a lot of people who are uh, visibly queer uh, they are in a glass closet sort of that is they Uh, they, that is uh, people will know that they queer they will face a lot of uh, backlash for it and they don't have any other option so uh, for myself i have a privilege that i can decide when to come out to who to come out to but a lot of people don't and you know uh, i personally won't want to come out in an environment such as my college throughout my college life because i have seen um, how people react to it i have i know people who have had really bad experiences with coming out in public so uh, i'm not trying to do it anytime soon <laughs> it's okay um kritika rajat prabhu any of you want to add something to it yeah that's 
that's the thing because you do not know how people would react so the only advice i would like to give is that come out when you feel comfortable if you have the privilege as i said do not just come out because you want to or you you know you feel like you have to it's totally up to you if you do not feel comfortable or or, or safe in an environment you do not have to tell them your identity or your sexuality or your gender identity Wow. Thank you so much, Topilia. Uh, actually, I also want to ask this. Like, uh, Section three seventy seven was uh, abolishment of Section three seventy seven was such a landmark judgment. How much do you think have we actually been able to, you know, absorb it in our lives, you know? And and do you think that it it somehow makes coming out easier, or it somehow makes finding your, you know, place in the society a, a bit easier? Should I add to it? Try it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I think for me, because I was, I came out, I came out like I was out, even like, the time section three seven seven was there, so it didn't make much of a difference. But like after, it was like decriminalized. But for other people that I've seen, it's been easier. It's been a little bit easier because there is no backing to the people's you know homophobia now. Yeah. Usually they used to go like, "Hey, the law recognizes you," and like all of that. I have seen people constantly getting harassed. It's mostly it's upon like trans people more being themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's easier for such people, but it's not that easier. It's still there, but the trans people have it worse. Yeah. Also, with the question on three seven seven, I won't exactly call it legalization uh, more than it is decriminalization. So, just that three seventy seven was when three seventy seven was removed. Uh, homosexuality was decriminalized. Uh, even today, there are no uh, protection laws in place or no anti-discrimination law in places. That is, if someone is, uh, if someone is uh, homophobic to me, if uh, someone is mocking me, uh, I cannot legally um, have a complaint against them. That is, the law does not protect me. The law just decriminalizes me. That I can still face. Harassment. Uh, I think that it, that is changed, obviously. But uh, what we need in the future is anti-discrimination laws uh, for protection purposes. The uh, I wanted to, like, you know, sorry for interrupting you, but uh, I have had this talk with other people, and I think people don't really understand how important legal rights are, how important a uh, marriage act is, and I uh, want you to, you know, little bit tell us more about it because I think it's very important that you brought this topic up. Mm-hmm, exactly. So uh, there, basically, at stage one, okay, we have just it has been um, just like three years uh, since three seven seven has been decriminalized, and there's such a long way to go. The first thing is anti-discrimination laws. That is, someone faces homophobia in their workplace or in public, they can have complaints against you. Then, if um, the law regards the uh, people in homosexual relationships as being equal to those in heterosexual relationships. The first thing that is needed is marriage rights. More than marriage rights, I would say, uh, you know, having legal uh, rights over the patient. For example, if someone is in a hetero relationship and their partner requires life support or the withdrawal of life support, they can make decisions about it. But if my, if I, uh, my partner is in such a situation, I have no rights over their property. I have no rights over anything that they own. Because the law does not recognize my relationship, whether it's through marriage or whether it's through um, another channel. Also, uh, adoption is illegal uh, for a lot of homosexual couples, and uh, so, yeah, so that's there. I mean, yeah, I would like, like in a way, law uh, basically cripples you from having a good life. It stops you from having a meaningful life with your partner. just on the basis of your sexuality like you can't get benefits on taxes that the uh, heterosexual mm-hmm. married couple get and you know you can't adopt children you can't have a family but uh, this one more thing that i wanted to you know ask that there was recently um, uh, madras fc verdict and you know s sharma was his commissioner of police case and do you think that this is somewhat a positive sign like are we moving towards a bit more optimistic future Yes, that definitely is because I remember when I tried to come out to my mother, the first thing she said was, 
डॉक्टर के पास लेके चलते हैं एंड आई थिंक दैट्स व्हाट मोस्ट क्वीर पीपल फेस व्हेन दे फर्स्ट कम आउट टू देयर फैमिलीज और क्लोज वंस दैट यू नो दे विल टेक यू टू डिफरेंट कन्वर्जन थेरेपीज यू कैन टेक यू टू अ साइकोलॉजिस्ट और अ डॉक्टर और अ बाबा और समथिंग सो दैट्स अ प्लस दैट एट लीस्ट नाउ आई कैन टेल हर दैट यू नो दिस इट्स इलीगल टू डू सो यू कांट आई हैव नोन पीपल नॉट uh in real life but are known people who have been taken uh, you know to psychologists and doctors and it's weird that uh, doctors and psychologists in the first place do this because they're supposed to be the educated people of the country but how about at least uh, i don't know how much of it is, it will affect uh, the on ground scene but at least uh, i think this is the first step to you know doing away with this the whole conversion therapy right and uh, like while we are on this topic the conversion therapy and stuff i just want if any of you could elaborate more on it because i'm pretty sure a lot of people don't really know what conversion therapy is okay so conversion therapy is basically when you know uh, someone is not like in the line of the heteronormativity that you said and they basically do not fall in like any normal any like any kind of like which is binary or any heteronormativity that is said they tend to not let them be themselves and tend to like make them gravitate towards their you know their own binary i think binary would be the better term to say so for that we have centers in which the people are sent and through various shock therapies and a lot of therapies actually there there is physical torture there is mental torture there is there are threats included there are operations included these are all i've heard i think there is more to it it's basically right. like an asylum yeah yeah it's it's crowd wrenching what happens in the name of you know it's uh, very good and see yeah right i yeah. remember a case about this uh, woman from i guess kerala who was bisexual yeah and, yeah she she yeah, was yeah. anjana harish yeah. right yeah, she was sent to yeah. conversion yeah. therapy just to make her you know straight yeah and i think she she took her life by suicide yeah yeah okay this thing yeah i think it's sad what people do right and i think like what people who have this privilege sort of you know uh facing the kids you know even as parents you know it's, it's such a shame i think a lot of people don't understand the gravity of this but uh, you know electric shocks and you know drug abuse all of these are done with them and uh, some families actually get their uh, I'm sorry for uh, trigger warning this mention of rape but uh, some parents actually get their own children raped in the uh, hopes that it'll cure them which is uh, yeah there are videos on youtube you know there are videos on youtube which have it shows what inside of the motion therapy center but they're not in the conversion therapy centers they are outside but they're very triggering to see like if someone is curious to see them they can but it's very triggering to see I think what's even sadder is that people don't know about it. What this when you talk about queer rights, they'll say, you know, why are you giving them extra coverage? They see the rainbows. They don't see the storm beneath, like after the rainbow. They don't that's, see that's what they right. see what goes on. It's easier to say than you know, like being straight and you see two to three queer representation in some movie. You see that. your friend came out and he is happy in front of you and they think that it's you know it's just all set in stone for them they don't realize think, the backlash right and i think it also uh, puts a question on how companies profit off by telling the rainbow stuff but they don't really bring forward the meaningful stories like you know rachit said they see the rainbows but they don't see the storm so like you know what is your opinion on queer baiting like it's very controversial because from what i've talked is that on one hand you get representation on the other hand is this the kind of representation we want but is any representation good representation that is the question right asked. because uh, i personally feel that uh, queer representation means when you're giving act when you pass in the mind you know uh, that is when uh, a queer person is coming out with a story they coming about coming out and they telling people what they face 
it is not when uh, corporations and you know multi billion dollar uh, corporations would put up an ad uh, and would hire a certain percentage uh, that is i guess 2 or 3% percent. i guess a lot of companies do that now they have reserved certain seats uh, certain positions in their company for queer individuals and for um, women and they think that their work is done there and it is definitely not the case because they have done nothing to change the society and uh, even when they giving a presentation to people it is usually till a certain level that is they cannot rise beyond that i have seen a lot of as i said people crib about it that this certain company has a diversity hiring and 10% of their seats are for women and for queer individuals and i've seen them bash it a lot but it is very important that they realize that these are just a name they will never be able to rise to position that a man with so much privilege would it is just a man i think so- that's a very good point vansh mm-hmm. and they just for name sake is what my point is in most companies i am sure there are exceptions to this i am sure that there are some companies which are willing to do actual good the worst part is that all the profits they get in this capitalism of this month they are donating it to anti lgbt organizations mostly it all goes to them like 95% of the company they support their donations to anti lgbt organizations they hire it very well um while we are on this uh, entire thing i think even the movies they do this kind of queer baiting even though yeah. there was this movie uh what was that movie the dostan uh, i guess no 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 it was like the recent one where they where two actors kiss in the wedding shubh uh, shubh mangal zyada sangran Yeah, Shaman. people actually people actually liked that movie, but that was it was so stereotypical. It was like literally, there was some parts of the movie which were good about that, the family not accepting, which were which was accurate to some extent. It was accurate, but then it got like you know, very. It, it lost its nuance, right? Yeah, I mean, but it's still what the message is wanted to send. It just got mixed up in all stereotypes. It was not even like valid enough. I think most of them are made from a uh, straight male case. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Vans, okay. do you want to add something? Uh, so uh, don't you know I am okay with straight people playing queer char- characters in movies and in TV shows. It's obviously okay. I'm not trying to get keep that. But the thing is that at least have a positive representation and at least have a representation which is not stereotypical. Uh, because that is very harmful in the sense that not for us but for a lot of the older generation whatever is being portrayed in the movies is what uh, they're seeing uh, how have your parents view changed about the queer community okay so one thing i would like to say for the people who are listening to this uh, that is if in future you decide to have children and uh, in if you are not ready to accept them uh, when they queer do not have children at all because it is the worst way that you can you know spoil them and you can make their lives miserable talking from personal experience my parents are great i don't have any complaints um i am very privileged to have such great parents but yes they are homophobic they are transphobic and um when i was younger and um, when i was like 10 or 12 and when i used to see them they were never outrightly homophobic Uh, they didn't make statements but yes they used slurs and they used a slur which is a very triggering word for me because of the very same reason and whenever they used that slur i felt broken from inside i felt that you know if i ever come out to them they will think of me in the same way that they are thinking of the person that they are saying the slur to that is they have so much hate for another person how much hate will they have for their own child so that used to break me as a child and it was a very bad experience so if in any way uh, you think that you will not be accepting of the child if they are queer then please don't have children so That's do you want to add something to it? Oh, and also i'm very sorry to hear that so you asked ki if uh, any family member or you asked about their parents and my parents are not great as like most Uh, older people are but i do have a story of my brother when i came out to him he was like 12 or 11 years old so he didn't know much about queer people in general he was like one of those homophobic 
carrying an RTE viewer boy <laughs> and when i and like when i came out to him i was 14 so he was like 12 and one year later he's actually compl- ranting to me about how you know harry styles wearing a dress gets so much backlash or how like even a boy wearing makeup gets so much hate so i think that's very the character development he has gone through after me coming out to him that was like a really really happy a great thing to see he he was not really accepting of queer people or even like he didn't even know about their existence because like he was also young and uneducated but after seeing that you know i have a sibling who is going through stuff he actually changed his views which was like really great for me and i'm like so glad that these conversations are happening you know and that internet has become such a huge an important tool for change and that people are coming out and and you guys came today you know to help enlighten us you know and educate us and our audiences on all of these issues so yeah you know and i think uh, it's it's great that you we're all willing to condition our uh, our challenge our conditioning you know and and be more empathetic and uh, learn more about things that we don't know about right now you know because the more we learn about it the better you know we're going to get at it and the more inclusive a community is going to become so yeah uh there is this one question that we uh, that we had received and it was that if uh you could talk about uh core characters that you have resonated with uh media that you've resonated with recently and any representation in pop culture like beat songs music anything that uh, you know that would mean uh that means a lot to you Can I go first? Yeah, Pratika, go ahead. Okay, so uh, around the time I was coming out to myself, coming in terms to coming in terms with myself, uh, I listened to this song called "She" by Dodi. I don't know if you guys know, but it's a really beautiful song. It talks about uh, Dodi falling in love with a girl and all that. And that was actually one of the actually the first time that I thought, hmm, okay. I am by and that's okay. You know it's 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 not probably the worst thing ever. Uh and then there was a show uh, that I watched uh called The Other Love Story. It's uh, it's an Indian uh, web series thing on YouTube and I stumbled across it on Facebook this article pe and I uh, I decided hey let's watch it. And so I think uh It, it it's it's also about two uh, women in the 90s uh falling in love and uh, navigating their relationship beautiful show i think uh, if anybody here has not watched you should watch and i think these were the two first two media may as a cheese into i watched and i thought ki, okay you know maybe my existence is not um bad or i don't know how to exactly say this but yeah, yeah i get that sentiment right um that's it the whole bunch and think that you would like to add so as yes, when i was questioning my gender identity which was very recently that i came to term, terms with it uh, there's a character in there's a web show chilling adventures of serena and there's a character in it who's a trans man and who's also a teenager and who's also come uh, who's also accepted himself as trans and when i was watching it the show someone told me that they relate that character to me because i was also realizing my gender identity and during that time only his name is theo by the way so i think that's that character theo from chilling at adventures of sabrina he really uh, is one character i relate to a lot uh Yeah, so uh, I I had this question. Uh, we like while we were going through the forms, we saw that a lot of people responded by asking uh, how that they could become better allies to the movement. Uh, so do you guys have any uh, like you know any anything that you can tell our audiences that things that they should what they could do, you know that they could become better allies to the movement? Should I add to it? Okay. Should I add to it? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think it's just one step. It's literally just 
listen to the people and what they got to say listen to the queer people like just listen to them and that would really help you a lot that's how you can be an ally don't go like two steps ahead of whatever they're doing don't go two steps back of whatever they're doing stay with them listen to them that's the best you can do that's a very beautiful sentiment to that thank you and i would like so to well, add one thing to be said that just be uh, open to other people uh, open to what they're feeling at least uh, you know even if you having second thoughts about accepting someone which you should i mean even if you having second thoughts about it just be sure that you're listening to them listening to what they're feeling because that is a very basic thing that most queer people don't have that they don't have anyone to talk to so just make sure that you can create a safe environment where they feel that they can talk where they feel that they can be themselves and just be non judgmental about it like that's the bare minimum you can do and i think that is uh, how you can help queer individuals come to terms with themselves be more comfortable with themselves and just live the life as the way they want i'd like to add to this and say that uh, i think people should try and to read up on their own educate themselves because a lot of times the brunt of you know educating people around uh, like other people falls on queer people which shouldn't be the case you know they have the problems of their own and you know they're navigating their own life uh, so i don't know no you should no, try no. that that's a very good point to take up you should try and uh, reading uh, reading up on issues that bother us you know problems that we face and make sure that uh, you do your part in uh, in whatever way that you can to you know help us out, help us out there right because as cis people we don't have to face it this is not our lived reality so the least we can do is just read a article so that we don't make any you know we don't make life unknowingly hard for someone else exactly we are already very privileged there are enough resources on the internet now so you know i i, I don't know i would say that ignorance at least now is a choice because there are a lot of resources out there you know there are a lot of people you can talk to so if you're choosing to be ignorant uh, yeah it's just seeing a lot of people uh, who have friends who are homophobic like they're not homophobic themselves they're good people but they fail to follow their friends and they normalize the behavior of the friends or they uh, defend it and that is one thing that you should absolutely not do because you should realize that it is very harmful and by not saying anything by keeping quiet you are indirectly supporting it so at least uh, call out your family members your friends the people around you uh, if you see them being outright homophobic you can at least call them out on it and tell them not to and tell them how it's wrong and educate them about it if you consider yourself to be a good ally so so well put once you know that the onus is now on us you know that we no longer that we shouldn't you know try and fit everyone into our constructs of morality and tradition so yeah thank you thank you so much for that so oh have there any okay. further questions yeah i have one right okay you should please uh there is this thing that i really wanted to talk about and i haven't seen it been addressed in lot of other panels that i've seen is the dating thing in queer relationships because first of all you know a lot of people are not out and uh, it makes things harder and then there are like no legal protection and stuff like that have you thought about it like about dating um being you know the members of the community and i really wanted your views on it yeah i mean dating is like very common i think it's, it's like super common thing because of the even the dating apps they have options now you can find people from the community you are ideal people because you have the choices now so i think it's like common and it's hard too because you know if you are like constantly scared of first of all being judged publicly you can't do things publicly what normal people can do like normal people is like they have to normative people who like sit in the bounds uh what they can do they can hold hands they can kiss in public they can like i think they can even like stay together we can't even do that and that's still a taboo of two people right. at the same time they stay together i think so there are few direct 
there were few directors who weren't offered home in mumbai for a very long time the, uh, yeah. that was actually akmur basrani and his partner yeah so like i think internet has helped like such as uh, you were going on about that that you know apps have now preferences and stuff like that yeah i mean it has internet has definitely helped like online it's online i think it's easier than on the ground i think i was like that's it for most of the things even though both of them have a chaotic side to it but still it's like a little bit more easier and friendly online than on the ground as i have like i think i dealt with both of them and on the ground i have this to do things which are triggering which can't be triggering to people because it's still not you know as much as normal like right? yeah normalized or yeah it's kind of like even if you go meet someone or like on the ground if you go meet someone and you meet them and you talk to them you make a bond you both like each other and then you decide to take things forward you decide to date and even then it's done in like close bounds you know you can't decide to like you just can't like another like something the one person decide to like tell someone because that's like outing the other person and then because it has a lot of factors to it and right. what if the parents come to know and how would they react and then because and then there are no other steps to that because we don't have the rights to other steps we can't get married we can't adopt we can't stay together without being judged i mean that's like so like the steps end at like one point which is up to the, the dating phase because that's okay but the dating phase is still very you know in like around your four walls which you can't take them down because you know taking them down would mean being constantly criticized to judge them so uh, like as it said uh, about the dating thing um, i can go out in public i can hold hands with my partner i can you know i know there's certain uh, spaces i'm not supposed to do it because i would get a lot of judgment but in other places i can do that but the thing is that whenever i've done it even if i just do it in the future uh, there is this feeling of uh, me being scared about what the consequences will be and that is something that said people do not have to worry about that is they can go around they can hold hands with their partners they can kiss their partners in public and uh, i on the other hand even if i do it i'll always be worried if someone is noticing if someone is around if someone is judging me and we know how dire the consequences can be if somebody homophobic notices things like notices things like this and there are a lot of weird videos on uh, i guess youtube where people in the middle of um, cannot place that is the center of delhi uh they were it was a social experiment uh, they were going and uh, you know harassing and uh, bullying uh, couples so yeah that is a very real thing and i am even when i'm even when i'm with my partner in public i'm always worried about just these things happening that i can never be free i can never be myself i get that right once that's i'm very sorry to hear that uh, hear that for first of all and i really hope that this changes to something more like we uh, i hope that we march forward to a better future uh, while we're on the topic of dating and you guys mentioned dating apps uh, i think these apps all together save because i remember some time back uh, i read these articles about catfishing that that kind of happens on these apps you know where straight people impersonate uh, gay people and then they you know harass them and out them so uh, like what's your thought on that yeah i think catfishing is like still like the lowest of the bound you know cuz mm-hmm. i'll tell you something i know from like one of my friends and he was very traumatized after that so he was like grinder is like very common yeah. for like gay people to you know for casual hookups casual dates casual meetups they mostly prefer grinder because grinder is typically made for that purpose only for the meeting of same gender bound and like yeah it's basically made for like non heteronormative people yeah so the point of that is like they go it's a casual meet up it's a casual hook up they go for that and uh so one of my friend they went and waha pe here he was basically like put on like a knife point and he was like looted because the person robbed basically so like 
this kind of things happen too. Like, it's not easy. Like, catfish is okay. Catfishing is like still the lowest form, but it's still bad, of course. Yeah. There are like wars to this, and I have personally experienced like when sometimes I go out, you know, we are having drinks, we're in a bar, we are having drinks, and I could see them, you know, roofing my drink. I could see them mixing drugs in my drink because they they know what they want. They and they will get it. They don't understand consent. And this is inside the community. This is not even outside the community. Straight people come to experiment too. They want to use you, but they won't. They won't like directly come to you. They do this thing. They drug your drinks. They they will harass you. Trigger warning. They will assault you. So yeah, it's it's often dating apps too. Sometimes. So yeah, it gets worse. And I think it's even worse because there's no legal uh, laws to, you know, prevent that. Like, if you, exactly, as, a, yeah. as a male, if you roof a woman's drink, there are multiple laws that can come after you. Like, you at least have this place that you can question this sort of behavior. But there's nothing like that for, you know, specifically for queer people. There's no law to, um, that you can, you know, fall back on. And I think that makes things even worse. Yeah, there are no laws. Especially even for, like, cis men. Like cis gay men, even if like after 18, there are no laws to bar them up from anything, and that's how like it gets worse. Uh, there's this one more thing I wanted to ask. Do you think that the checks that are right now there to prevent abuse in relationships, especially in queer relationships, when you don't have any uh, legal sort of, you know, uh, legal sort of support do you think there are enough checks that uh, there's enough checks to prevent abuse in the community to prevent abuse in core relationship what are your thoughts on that i think that's what you know because we need anti-discrimination laws uh, first of all we need them for trans people the most because uh, they are the ones who are facing the brunt of the transphobia and the homophobia and uh, these laws are just for the namesake because uh, if a trans woman is um, trigger warning uh, assaulted or uh, raped, then the punishment that they are getting is uh, six months, and the, the uh, assault is getting six months, and that can be extended to two years at maximum. And similarly, if it, if it is for cis women, it would be seven years minimum. All right. So these laws are discriminatory. Uh, at the very behest, they are very discriminatory. So uh, we need a lot of um, checks and balances, and we need new laws which protect queer people specifically because, let's face it, they face more uh, harassment, uh, harassment, more uh, backlash, and they are uh, more prone to facing such things. So definitely, the most basic thing that we require is protection laws, especially for trans people. Right, and I think I think Indian law doesn't even recognize uh, male rape, and that puts a lot of women uh, in a very tough position. It's very mm-hmm. discriminatory towards them. Uh, because these were all a bit heavy questions, and this entire podcast has had a bit of heavy questions. There was this question that we wanted to ask you. Uh, what is your like best coming out story? It could be to your friend um, in the community as well that you found online. But what is something that gave you a bit of hope, I guess? Also, um, sorry. So uh, the lockdown had just happened. It was March or April probably. And um, I hadn't talked to one of my friends uh, for like a month. Like the last time I met her was when we had gone to give our exams. And after that, I didn't meet her. I didn't talk to her uh, at all. So this one day uh, in April, I uh, just texted her. Do you know this XYZ thing? Uh, I'm by and I put a full stop and I end the sentence there. And she saw the text and she didn't reply for about three or four days. Okay. And uh, three or four days later, uh, she texts me, yeah, comma, me too, full stop. And... <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I then, um, like, the cool people we are, I just send the thumbs up emoji. And then we don't talk about it for, like, five months till we meet again in September. And then it was a time that we addressed it. Like, we both 
knew uh, and we just let it go and we forgot about it and we addressed it six seven months later that's a very mean thing i would do that too if i had you know i would avoid stuff like that <laughs> yeah so uh, with a a lesson you can learn is don't come out on text very often <laughs> do it on call or in real life preferably is that it pratika anything from your side i recently came out to my brother i was i was actually not very sure if i should and i had been thinking about it for a long time so to actually gauge ki if uh, he's i say he's not homophobic i remembered ki he had put the story you know that well, those stories that you put ki i'm a safe person to come out to and all of that so he had put it on his story when i was in like 11th grade i actually screenshotted it then because uh, i thought ki whenever i come out to him and if, if he is you know not nice about it i'll just send it to him and i'll say ki tu jhoot hai but uh, yeah recently i made a form and you know for there's this college uh, queer collective in my college so I made the form from the queer collective uh, uh, ka ID, and I sent it to him. And I said, "Here is a general survey that we are doing, and we are sending it to everybody." I had, but it was only for him to gauge that he is homophobic or not. And after which, I came out to him, and it was nice. He just said, "Okay." So that that's a very wholesome reaction, honestly. Like no big deal, just okay. Yeah. That's a very smart move, though. That's a very smart move, Pritika. Yeah, exactly. I will remember that. I will tell that to people who want to come out. Uh, that says, uh, if you have any story like that, we would love to hear that. I my coming out was like very messy because I told this person in school, "He, I am this, my identity." I was like, "By the by thing." and i told him that i am by see i am you am by and then uh it just you know started like the rumors it just went around oh okay and that's, i was like that's not right out. i think i was like almost out to the entire school or we even knew and i used to get this slurs so almost every day so I, it went down the slurs went down but i knew they were taking seeing it behind my back not because the kind of hate in front of my face because they know it's like it now matches with the ideology they go through so yeah and but i have seen wholesome coming out stories too like very wholesome much a very cute to see you know those like tiktok kind of thing i see them a lot where they're coming out to people and then they're accepting and it's really like very cute to watch so, yeah. thank you thank you so much for sharing that um before we wrap up uh i just wanted to say how good this talk has been honestly and i cannot say enough thank you to all of you for coming here so there was this question that somebody asked and they said how to react when someone cracks a homophobic joke joke and you don't like it like what is the proper way to have that conversation and educate them about why it's wrong okay just call it out and uh, i've said this before people tend to get very defensive when you call them out ki it was just a joke or whatever so if you try to make make it sure that they know that you're not just really point making them the villain you're just trying to educate them that would be great because if instead of being like uh why are you doing this why, you should just try to make them make it sure that they know that you're not trying to you're not saying that they are inherently bad people you are trying to make make them better people for future if they know that they would improve most of the people would yeah. that's one thing i think uh a lot of these questions are the questions that we already covered in the podcast so uh, yeah ananya do you want to ask something from here I think like uh, it's, it's been pretty much clear. Uh, like we we have covered almost all these questions. So I don't think so. There's anything left to add as such. Right. Um. I just wanted to share that last. Uh. One of the responses that we received, and because we're wrapping up almost, that I wanted to share was that there was this response that we received where a person said that you know they have always suppressed their uh, attraction to the same sex 
people because they were always afraid. But now that they know about the LGBT community, they don't feel ashamed or confused anymore. And I just wanted to, you know, say it in the podcast as well to all the people that are listening. This is why the representation matters. And this is why, uh, you know, panels like these, podcasts like these matter. Because you see heterosexual relationship everywhere, but you don't see enough LGBT people. And it's important that we see them. Because a lot of people are there who are lost and who need some kind of, you know, hope, who need some kind of representation, any representation. And I think, you know, that was the point of this podcast. And I'm really glad that we could do it and you all came. And yeah, this is this has been a very lovely time, honestly. I hope that this podcast showed you that there are people like you full of hopes, dreams, aspirations. And with that note, we end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.